Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? Game Boy Color backlight kits have been a thing for a while now, and though they offer awesome results, installation isn't exactly beginner friendly. But this time, let's take a look at a new backlight kit that is. This is a replacement LCD module from Midwest Embedded, who kindly sent it my way for this review. It's meant to be used in place of the console's original display, to upgrade it from a frustrating, reflective-only screen to a modern, bright backlit one. Previous backlight kits used screens from the Game Boy Advance SP. I even covered one of them myself. But for as well as they worked, they needed a decent amount of skill and effort to install, largely around modifying the console's front housing. This kit, though, is designed to be much easier. Some trimming to the front housing is still necessary, but it's really straightforward. The screen opening needs to be enlarged to fit the new LCD panel, and a notch cut out of the side to accommodate the ribbon cable connector. A couple of the inner supports need to be shaved down in order to add some clearance for a few wires later on. But the big thing about this front panel work is that it doesn't require any special tools or skills. You could use a Dremel or flat file, but even a craft knife would work if that's all you have. And I can say that with confidence because I intentionally only used one of those when modding my own shell to make sure it was possible. A template is provided to help you get the cutout just right, but even without it, it's pretty obvious what needs trimming. Now with the new screen fitting in the front housing, a few wires need to be connected to the Game Boy's circuit board. A length of epoxy-coated magnet wire is included in the kit, and a piece gets soldered to a point next to the power switch. The other end goes to a clearly marked pad on the back of the screen. This is really the only one necessary to make the kit work, but if you solder additional wires to the pads of the up, down, and select buttons, and one more for ground, then you unlock an additional feature of the display we'll get to in a little bit. I used some pieces of Kapton tape to hold the wires down, but a small dab of super glue would work too. And once the wiring's done, that's pretty much it. Just drop in the screen, put the circuit board back, then button up the housing. You don't have to do any modifications to the circuit board itself, and all the original functionality is still there, like the front power LED. This all works because the replacement screen module is really thin, and it generally fits within the footprint of the original display. I was glad to see that there was some attention paid to the metal housing of the LCD itself. It's slightly smaller than the original screen, so the sides are visible through the front screen cover. But since they're black, they're not really noticeable. And the overall image quality and experience is great. The screen's circuitry is powered by an FPGA and does simple integer scaling, so the picture stays nice and crisp. Colors are rich, but not overly saturated. Viewing angles are decent. And something that struck me was just how clean everything looks. There's really no ghosting with this panel, so motion is super smooth. And those extra wires that go to a few buttons? You probably guessed it, they're used to control the brightness of the backlight. Hold down select and press up or down to switch between eight different levels. It's what's called a transflective display. So while it has a backlight for self-illumination, it also has a reflective layer, so you can see it clearly in bright ambient light. Ultimately, this means that if you're playing outside on a sunny day, you can turn off the backlight entirely and get better battery life. And speaking of battery life, all things considered, I think it's decent. Midwest Embedded rates it as three hours using a pair of rechargeable double A's, and in my own testing with some 1900 milliamp hour Enda loops and the brightness maxed out, I got four hours. I'm told that future revisions will have a goal of lower power consumption, so these numbers will only get better as time goes on. Overall, I think this is a solid option for those who want to get into Game Boy Color modding. This type of kit is seeing some decent competition. There are a couple of similar offerings on the market at the time this video went live, and no doubt there will be more in the future. All these kits will have their own pros and cons, but I think Midwest Embedded's offering is perhaps the most well-rounded with its high-quality screen and backlight control. 
If you have some experience doing other simple Game Boy mods, you can totally tackle this one. It's nowhere near as difficult as something like a DMG backlight, and the instructions provided for the kit are clear and detailed, and you may not even need them. I think the price is fair, too, at $65 US plus another $6 or so for shipping. But it's worth noting that, at least at launch, the US is the only location these will ship to, though they're also made in the US, if that's important to you. I have to say that I'm really happy with the state of console modding these days. A lot of really creative engineering has gone into products that can make retro games look or play better than their developers ever imagined. And bringing down the barrier to entry, both in price and installation difficulty, benefits everyone. This screen kit from Midwest Embedded follows along those lines, and is totally worth considering if the Game Boy Color is one of your favorites. I owe a big thank you to Midwest Embedded for sending out a kit. I'll include a link in the description. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.